Hello guys, welcome to my Linux tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to fix broken or misconfigured EFI settings. Um, so the first thing you have to do is you're going to have to have a live or a persistent version of Kali. So the first thing you want to do is you want to install this live or persistent version on a USB. If you have Windows, you're going to want to use Rufus to install it on a USB as opposed to if you have access to Linux, then you want to use a program called USB Imager in order to create a live boot USB. So upon doing this, um, you're going to want to boot up into that live version of Linux. And um, after booting up into that live version of Linux, open up the command line and the tutorial will start from there. So in advance, I'm just going to apologize to you guys if I look like I'm looking off screen. Um, I just have two larger monitors and they're both in opposite directions. So if I'm like looking over here or like looking here, I, I swear to you, I'm still paying attention. It's just my monitors are in opposite directions. So I apologize in advance. So the first thing you want to check is you want to make sure under your boot info that um, the EFI settings do not exist when checking your EFI folder. Um, this video is actually after I fix the issue, which I can then select my Kali and Grub settings in my EFI folder. But if this is not the case for you, then this tutorial will show you how to fix the issue. So the first thing we're going to have to know is the command lsblk. So this is going to show you where all your drives are on your computer and where you're currently mounted. So this is the first command we're going to need to know. So we can currently see we're on our live partition. The second command that we're going to need to know in order to perform this is blkid. Um, if this doesn't work and you only see one dri drive, you want to do sudo blkid. And you should be able to see all your drives. So when you're looking at this information, what you need to look at is first a VFAT drive, which is labeled EFI system partition. Um, if you know your EFI partition by heart, then you sure, but make sure you're getting the correct partition number. The second one is the partition that your Linux is gonna be on. So in this case, um, what I do look for would be an EXT drive. So we can see one right here. And I know as a fact, when I installed Linux, this is the drive that I installed it on, the partition. So in order to start this off, might as well just update, just in case, like just the live version of Kali. So you want to be in a persistent version in order to get this to work. And the first thing we're going to do is install uh, EFI var. I've already installed it, so it will be pretty quick here. But um, this will allow us to list all of our EFI variables. So if I do EFI var dash, dash L, you will get a list of all your EFI variables. So now to get into the functions that we're actually going to do. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to mount our EFI partition. Or no, we're going to mount our non-EFI partition here. So we're going to mount that one at just the location shown above, just slash mount. And then the second one, we're also going to mount our, um, our, so that the first one was our Linux partition. The second one is going to be our EFI partition. So you're going to mount it at slash mount slash boot slash EFI. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to have to mount a bunch of other things. So for I in, oh, my typing is pretty bad, slash dev, slash dev, slash points, slash proc, and slash sys, we're going to have to do sudo mount dash b dollars i. slash mount dollars i 
and then done. And what this line does is it just mounts a bunch of other stuff that so we don't have to enter a thousand commands. So now what we're going to do is you got, want to make sure you're connected to a network on your live persistent version of Kali. So what this command does is it's just connect calc um, it's just taking your network configuration and just copying it across just so in case you're at a different network location or just to make sure you're keeping your network connection when you're copying it across to your existing Linux. So now that we've done all of that, what we're going to do is we're going to actually list and see where we exactly are. So look, you can see that we've mounted two mount things attached to the partitions. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to ch root into our mount partition. Or so now that we've done that, we can perform LSB OK again, and you should see that you're attached for boot slash EFI at your EFI partition, and you're also attached just to your um, Linux partition. So then I'm going to run update again. And then um, we're just going to try to inst install EFI var again, just in case we don't have it on our other version. After we've done that, we're just going to clear. And this is the important part of um, making sure that repairing your grub. So what we're going to do is we're going to sudo apt-get install reinstall grub-efi. And then we're going to update grub. I, I messed up and I typed grub update, which is not a command. But uh, next, we're going to update grub. Now, after we've done this, we we're, we're just want to check to make sure that in the EFI partition, so that that it's actually installed. So this is going to be located in boot slash EFI, not boot slash ETC. There we, there we go. OK. So now you should be able to CD into EFI. And then you should be able to see a Kali folder. So this is going to mean we're going to be able to copy our Greg config when we go to our boot menu. And inside that, we're going to see our grub EFI has been created. Now, after this, it's also very important that you unmount all your stuff just to make sure you don't corrupt anything. So control D to exit. And then what we're going to do is for I in slash dev slash dev slash points slash proc slash sys, we're going to do the same thing, but we're just going to be doing unmounting. So the command's going to look a little different. You mount slash mount dollars i, and then done. And then what this will do is some, some of the targets will be busy. So the next, we're just going to enter our next command, sudo you mount slash mount slash boot slash EFI. We're going to enter that and then press the up arrow just to get back to that first one and run run that first one again. Now, after this, we're going to go to our, um, we're just going to unmount mount and then perform LSBLK. We should see we are back when we started. 